What's up, everyone? Welcome to GI Radio, the talk show where I interview influential people within this match community. This right here, who was right, the gentleman who's enjoying me is Fabs. Hey, Fabs, how are you doing today, man? Oh, uh, what's up? Uh, what's up, Hans? Um, I'm good, bro. Like, you know, it's, I'm good. It might be four in the morning, but I'm I'm chilling. <laughs> Just finished streaming, so you know, I'm in a I'm in a good mood. What, what did you stream today? Actually, I actually I so, was um, before all of us. <laughs> it's understandable. Um, so I've become for some reason I've become um a lot of Mario Kart streamer for some reason. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just a fun game I play with my friends. I'm streaming that every day. So I had a, a bit of that. And I played Lethal League for the first time ever. A friend uh, gifted Ooh. it to me. Uh, okay. So I thought I'd try it out. And I actually remember when I was in SoCal um, last year, I actually remember a friend of mine called Scooter. I'm mm-hmm. sure you know oh, yeah, Scooter. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, um, I remember he told me about the game Lethal League. And I, I didn't really mm-hmm. care about it. You know? And now that I've played it, I've seen he's a, a commentator at it. I was, uh, I was actually kind of like, surprised. Like, oh shit! Maybe I should have took a <laughs> bigger gander because it looks pretty fun. It's, it's pretty fun. I tried it for the first time tonight, so it's really fun. My Shout viewers seem to like it as well. So. Shout out to yeah, it's him. Good I, I had a, I had a really good time like hanging out with him like one time. Maybe like a future like who I want to say like ending before Smash Ultimate started. Like I had a really good time hanging out with him and Elgin, oh. and then we I think we were at an event together and we, we hung out and we talked a little bit. It was really cool to get to know him. I know him and uh, Taternator, they both play. Yeah, I was going to say Taternator is a, is a good player as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think every time I see him at WNF, I think he's like, I when I've seen him, I don't know if this is his entire, you know, score. So, so nobody, <laughs> nobody come at me and tell him like, oh yeah, the score is wrong. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't watch him. I, most of the time I've asked him like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, oh yeah, I'm in winner's finals. Or, like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he gets like pretty far. And I was like, oh, yeah. all right, cool. Super sick. I The game is super stylistic. I like it. You know, if you're a fan of uh, Jet Set Radio, it's definitely got that yeah. style and the music to it. The aesthetic uh, is, uh, is, is nice. It's pleasing. Definitely yeah. into the eye. And the ear. The music is extremely good. <sighs> it's great. It's great. Actually, it really has- Shout out to Mario Kart coming back too. I think that's the one game that I kind of like rid off. I was like, oh, Mario Kart will never come back. It's like a competitive game. And now on my Twitter feed, because I follow you and then everybody else retweets. Bear as well. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shoot. Everyone is playing Mario Kart right now. Tar- Charlie's playing Mario Kart. Bears. Yeah. I think, I think, um, I think given the quarantine, everyone's looking for a new games to play because, you know, nobody likes, nobody likes Smash Bros. <laughs> online to a degree. So uh, everyone's looking for different games. And I think where Mario Kart is such a big game. Uh, even though the netcode for that isn't exactly the best, but obviously yeah. 12 people can play at once. So it's like, exactly. why not get a bunch of friends and just play it? And uh, people seem to like to see to watch me rage or have fun <laughs> with the game. So. <laughs> Speak, speak of the devil, I think I, the, the best moment I could ever tell anybody, well, we, we've hung out a couple of times when you were here in SoCal, we, I, it was good times when you were around, and actually everybody always tells me, like, oh, I miss Fabs, he was, too, he was always great to hang around with, but my favorite moment, I want to say it might have been after one of the sagas, and mm-hmm. it, it was T, and I remember you told me you were a Pac-Man main back in the day before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, so then you said, fans, I got, it was me, Ark, and you. And then you said, I have, I have, I think you said you have five on T losing, but he's the GOAT. And I was like, I have five on T winning. So the arc is like, I'm walking out of this, but I was like, we shook on it. T won, <coughs> right? And then you just, you just look at you, you look down, you're so upset that he won because it was a matchup that he was bound to lose. And then I, take, so- the, oh. <laughs> I take the money, <laughs> I take the money and I tell, and I just give it to T and then T like, it looks at the dude, he's like, never seen like, it's like, he's never seen this much money before. <laughs> <laughs> he has all this money and then he's so proud and so happy he's just like what do i do with all this money that i've won um, <laughs> just to add to your shame it was hilarious because that was his, that was actually i actually remember that that was um that was after uh, uh it was like the, the MS- msm yeah it was the msm after prime saga mm-hmm. because i remember i was i was side betting on mars i was side betting on esam and we were still talking about it and i was like bro can you just please win for once let's just win this <laughs> and I, I remember zachary and, and uh T had to play, and I, I literally said to myself, bro, <laughs> Zachary bots T every time, and even though T is my goat, I have to be realistic, so I'm going to put money on Zach, you know what I mean? So that's why I came and found you, and then when T got that win, I was like, wow, that fucking S smash out of nowhere, I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I remember it I'll never forget using that money <laughs> yeah I never, that was my favorite thing it's like I grabbed that money I was like man I'm gonna give it to T just to add a little bit to <laughs> he grabs it, he looks at all the money he's like dude I've never hold this much money in my hands bless him but yeah dude yeah he's so so such a such a good kid but um, yeah definitely for sure that's what I want to come into you today, right? Like, I know you, but for those who don't know you, and before we get all into this, right, I, you know, I know who you are. We've hung out. We've talked, you know, we talked to each other. You were here in SoCal for a little while. I know you, but for those who don't, Fabs, uh, go ahead and give me an elevator pitch, man. Uh, i start. So, 
uh, the way people, I'd say, online would, would, would know me is they, they know me as that, that person that uh, is, is very loud uh, online, very, very loud. And people people would often be ask me, uh, what's he like out? You know, what's he like in real life? Is he, is he a quiet mm. person? Is he shy? And I think you and any of them of my friends would just vouch that, like, yeah. what you see online is exactly what you get. Oh, this mirrored. You know, I don't... Mm. There's no need to... Uh, pretend or whatever and i always right. say to people see what you mean i mean what you say so it's a very simple term but it's like it means so much because yeah. i just love to speak my mind you know i feel like that's where people either follow me or or <laughs> per se block me or hate me because this is like i speak yeah. my mind and i don't expect everyone to agree but as long as people can understand that i will not always keep it real then you know you can't really complain can you? so i'd say i'd say the biggest thing about me uh if you, if you don't know me is that i, I speak my mind yeah, I think that's the one thing that I appreciate. I mean, I, I'm very different. I was raised very, very differently, and I tell people sometimes oh, yeah, I come off sure. as shy. Sometimes I come off as shy. Sometimes I'm a little more reserved, and to my, not to my, to, not, sometimes not to my benefit, more to my dismay at times that I'm a little too quiet and I'm a little too shy. But that's what I've always appreciated about, like you know, getting to meet you and then you know, getting getting to know Charlie, and that you guys are so outspoken. You guys are not afraid to speak what's in your mind. Like Charlie, mm-hmm. I always tell people, when you see Charlie, you know it's him because he's telling you why your character is broken or why you did mm-hmm. it. And <laughs> when I met you, I was like, this guy. Not only is he funny, not only is he loud, but he's just great because he's saying what he's saying is actually the truth. I can't disagree. I can't disagree. So, you know, I got to meet you, and, but that's that's where we're going, right? That's what I kind of wanted to bring you here is to tell your story. Like, what's it what's it like growing up? And I kind of wanted to ask, you know, how did you get into video games? How did you do So, you... Um, basically, I, I, I don't really know. It's, it's, the funniest thing is, uh, I just, everyone everyone plays games as kids, you know, that's just like a, that's, well, I'd say that most kids, you know, if you play games as kids, you know, you get them off your older brother, then you know, I've got an older brother, you get them off siblings, and then you just play them. But um, competitive-wise, uh, I didn't know about anything competitive until I was 17, you know, and I'm, I'm 23. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm 23 in, like, what, okay. two weeks. Uh, I didn't know anything about that for a, a good while. Um, and I remember just playing loads of uh, loads of different games, uh, mainly um, games in the GameCube. And mm-hmm. funny enough, uh, I had a lot of friends that played uh, Mario Kart 8, right, on the Wii U. Um, and that actually was my first competitive game. Funny enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my friends told me about like people racing each other just to like you know compare. When I was like, what? People can play this game. You know, I didn't realize. And uh, I got pretty good at. I got pretty good at uh, mm-hmm. Mario Party. Um, I was on a few different teams. Uh, and then I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really feel it. I moved on to found out that people played Smash as a competitive game. Like, I just thought Smash was just some party annoying ass game with items. Right, right, right. When I first played Smash, and I wasn't really interested in it. And then my friends told me about Smash 4. Uh, like, you know, the Wii, had, you know, they told me that game coming out. And I was like, okay, I'll play it. You know, I didn't really enjoy it, but I didn't really enjoy Melee as a kid, but I'll play it, you know, whatever. And I, and I you know, I, I enjoyed it because they put Pac Man in the game. And uh, <laughs> Pac Man, Pac is, um, the reason why I actually made Pac Man 4 was because it's my favorite video game character as a whole. Oh, okay. Uh, it's also my first ever game. Like, Pac Arcade is one of the best games on, you know, that. Um, I'm actually pretty good at pack up here. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, always had like a pretty, I always had a big bond with it. Uh, and then I sort of put him in that game. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. Like, I'll play it. And then I found out there was a big tournament in, um, I think it was Amsterdam. Syndicate. The first Syndicate in 2016. Okay. Yeah, 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 big tournament. Big tournament. And uh, in my head, you know, I, I didn't know there was a competitive side. I didn't know that there was other UK people that played the game, right? So imagine I've gone to, I've gone to Amsterdam with a few of my friends from the Mario Party. Um, and I've just found out that there's other people in the UK that plays the game. I met Ixus, I met, mm. I met Vera, who was silent team back then, I met loads of English people, and I was like, whoa, there's so many English people that play the game. Mm. Um, and then from there, I just moved on, and I played, I played that competitive, I played Splatoon competitively, Splatoon 1. Uh, that, game was, Smash that game was so underrated competitively. I actually tell people that was the one game that I wish I, I never bought Splatoon 1, I actually just bought it. Yeah, and... I wish that game took off, like, oh, dude, properly, so properly. It was yeah, Splatoon 2 took off, but like, I'm not really a Splatoon 2 fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Splatoon 1 took off. It didn't, re- it didn't really take off that well. Um, and then I left both Mario Kart and Splatoon because I got pretty annoyed with both communities, actually. <laughs> and I basically put myself into the Smash community, and that's when I properly got out there, I guess. I guess where the growth came through. Yeah. Because I've, 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 I've always said that um, I've been the exact same person since uh, I 
had I didn't have to. So you know, my people, my friends told me to get it because it's like you'd be you'd be great on that, and I didn't really think I could be. But I just spoke my mind, and everyone just like yeah, just grew and grew and grew. Yeah. I think I'm the same. But that's, yeah, that's literally where my growth came from. That's where it's like to be to play video games. I'd say it's just, you know, I didn't really know about competitive until a few years ago, and then I, now I'm so heavily invested into it. Mm. I think for me, I am very much different. I had the GameCube, and if you guys are watching, I've already done the pilot episode, so you guys probably already know, me and Vicky Katie both got the same GameCube under the Christmas tree, which was the silver GameCube that had the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition with a 10-minute Wind Waker demo, which was really, really sick. Shout-outs to my mom for buying that for me, because I remember I had... I think my grades were solid. I'm pretty sure my grades were solid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. My mom sounds like the yeah, she, she, yeah, see, that's, that's how I know my mom loved me. She, know, <laughs> she still got it for me, but I got that GameCube for that year, and that was the beginning of the rest of my life. Almost, I would say. It sounds really weird, like, wow, video games are your life. It's like, eh, kind of. Kind of a big deal with me, but that, that became my, my system. That was what I played. I didn't know about competitive anything until maybe when I got to high school when like Brawl might have come out. So I'm a little bit older, I'm like twenty six now, but like well, yeah, time, yeah. The time of this recording, I don't know, years in the future or something, but I'm twenty six now and then I played Brawl and I loved Link and I played Marth and then, then I started noticing like, oh, there's a competitive club at my high school. I wanna go to that and then little did I know I'd be like the second best competitive player in my high school at the time and then that led me to like to play Smash 4 that led me to to play all these other games and it's funny because I ended up hating Brawl because of like I ended up finding out what chain grabbing was so getting chain oh, grabbed yeah. by Falco and facing men and I was a whole different ball game than having to deal with my friend who used Luigi and the other random ki- kid who used Samus and then there was a girl who would always go even with me I think her name was Vanessa and she actually used ZSS and ever since that I just tell people like it was different being number two was different than the competitive scene so I'm I totally agree with you like playing video games I didn't get get into competitive video much later in life until yeah I just thought it was all casual until like you mm-hmm. know yeah so, and that's what I kind of wanted to talk to you about like growing up who had you know I was very much blessed where my uncle was the one who was the gamer in the house he mm-hmm. was the one who had the, the PlayStation, he had the 64, and he would go to work, and I would come home way before him, because, you know, he used to work at a bank, and then I would come home and I would play, and then he would catch me playing, and then he'd teach me how to play, like, you know, GoldenEye, teach me how to play Star Fox. Oh, who? Yeah, told about <laughs> one. I love that game. <laughs> that was, that was but, a super um, game. But who, who dragged you into this? Who, who, said, who, said, uh, who said, Fabian, come over here and play this? Who, the who, funniest who, thing is, I think, I think, uh, since I used to play Pac Arcade as a literal, a literal like baby little little joystick as a kid, <laughs> I think I just got that for my birthday when I was like three. Otherwise, um, I just played because I have an older brother who's eight years older than me now, so mm. he's like thirty something. We used to play as kids, um, and I remember like the old single player games like Crash, Spyro, Sonic, Rayman, uh, all these type of games. I would always, um, you know spend hours upon it after school and if i can't do the level the first person i go to is my mom my mom is is literally the queen at that she she, she finished crash for me <laughs> she finished she finished do you know what do you know what's always what always was stuck in my mind i think people will relate to this sonic heroes right i don't i know people have already got this in their mind sonic yeah, heroes yeah, yeah. two levels power plant and um uh, yeah power plant. i forgot what the jungle level's called but the, cro- the know, know. alligators coming through the vines those two the, those two parts i could never do mm-hmm. uh, and i remember i went to school once and my mom actually when i when i uh, came home from school my mom she said i completed it for you she did she did egg emperor for me in sonic adventure one uh, wow she, she 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 was definitely like the but she wasn't really much of a gamer she just she she was just a very um determined person so like if she knew i was stuck at something she'd be like okay we're doing this like we're gonna do this that's so. crazy that's that's a mother but i don't think anybody there, had a yeah it was cool i don't think anybody had like a, a video game influence on me i don't think anybody's like passed it down mm-hmm. uh, it was just more so like here's a game do you like it play more and more and more i just, I just played more and more and more any game i could get my is what i'd ask well oh, can i get this game or can okay. i get this game i'm assuming you had like the Jeez. So I think what I remember when I was growing up is they had the Pac-Man plug-in play, where you would mm-hmm. put it into. The, I remember those. 
Okay, so you probably got one of those. Those are those are pretty sick. I remember they were. Really yeah, cool. I was I was I was pretty much uh, just kind of fortunate where um, I wasn't really spoiled, but like most game consoles, I I probably had you know mm-hmm. the N sixty four, the Dreamcast. Uh, didn't have since that's before my time, but Dreamcast, <laughs> uh, GameCube, uh, Wii, Wii U. You know, I was pretty fortunate to have all that. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I think I, I didn't have the SNES, but I was like what I was born in ninety three. So I think the SNES was out, but I wasn't really consciously aware of what a SNES was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the oldest was. thing I oldest thing I remember is Mega Drive, Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, same. I remember yeah, it was you think it might have been the Saturn or the Jaguar. I can't remember. Yeah. That was definitely my brother's time. Yeah. <laughs> my neighbor she had one and then I was just like, Oh, this is such a cool thing, but I, I don't know what this is. So I just remember just brushing it off and the next thing I know I because of Goldeneye, I, it's funny because I grew up a little bit about myself. I I grew up with a single mom, so my mom took care of me. So growing up, it was one day it was watching TV shows like Sex in the City, and then the next day it was watching Predator with my mom. So it was really really <laughs> weird. Where I was like, oh yeah, dude, I I know about Carrie Miranda and all these other characters in this TV show. <laughs> Yeah, but I also know I also know you know who James Bond, who Pierce Brosnan, in, you know I know who all these cool little guys. So I, that's how I grew up, and that kind of translated to my taste in video games, where I was like, oh yeah, I love 007, I love Goldeneye, I love Star Fox, I love Star Wars. That was that was me. Um, as we get as yeah, as we get onto you, I kind of want to know right, like, coming, you know, obviously growing up, right, growing up as you started to get older, you started to get into college, right, start taking your education. Then you came to the U.S. T- tell me a little bit about that decision. Did you have a? Tr- did you want to choose to go somewhere else, or you're just like you know I kind of so, want to study abroad? Because when I met you, I asked you how did you get? He- you know you got here, right? How did you meet Ark? How did you meet Shine? Number one in Taiwan, by the way, in Smash Four, and I think still probably in Ultimate. <laughs> how did you meet Ark and Shine? You told me it was because of BMC, and in BMC here in SoCal, he's you know the resident Pac-Man main. So kind of want to know how how do the things all go together? So basically. Um... Within my uni course, uh, graduate by the way. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Just waiting for my results, but yeah, thank you. Um, so during the my uni course, my university course, sorry, we call it uni over here. Uh, during my university course, it was usually uh, degrees like that have four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the reason mine was three, uh, because the second year you get to study abroad for six months, and it, and it like uh, you study at a certain school of your choice, and it like. I don't know how I don't know how it works. It's called like a sandwich degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I studied, when I studied, uh, I got to choose either Europe, um, New York, or somewhere in Europe, either, and then or New York, Canada, uh, SoCal, or Tokyo. Oh. Um, what I did was I ruled out Europe because I've been so I've been all around Europe. I've been to Sweden. I've been to Amsterdam, to France, been to loads of different places in in uh in eu you know i'm, I'm british you know, i don't really want to go to eu <laughs> yeah. um, i've been to new york a lot I've, I've, had, I've got family in new york so i didn't really want to go there and my three options were socal canada or tokyo and when i looked up prices because i didn't know um i ruled out canada because of the cold i'm not a fan of the cold at all right mm-hmm. i hate the cold and i didn't know where in canada i was going to be based so i just assumed it was going to be the cold part of canada that i that you know stereotypical kind of that everyone knows of, so I just ruled it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same with like, Tokyo or California, right? And uh, when I looked at housing prices, just in general on average, Tokyo was up there. Tokyo mm. was ridiculously, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to Japan. Oh, that's, a, that's another time. That's a, how, how how expensive was it? Can you, like on a scale of like, uh, like I, I'm not like, good at currency transfer, but like... Yeah, so basically from, from what I remember, uh, it was like living expenses for California, like in, on average was around... Uh, in pounds, UK, in pounds, uh, it was like uh, 10,000, mm-hmm. 10,000 okay. pounds, like, on average, whereas Tokyo was, I, I think, around 14, 15,000. Wow. So I was just like, and I was always like, California's already, you know, hurting my bank account, you know? <laughs> it's like hurting my bank account, and Tokyo would destroy it. And I didn't realize that I had to get health insurance and all that, because I forgot, you know, you guys, you know, have to pay for health and stuff like that. So I was like, wow. That's the worst part about uh, living here. All these, like, different things. So, um, yeah, so after I chose California, uh, and I, they approved the application because you have to write a paragraph on why you want to go there, blah, 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 which is really hmm. easy. Um, they gave me seven different schools uh, in California. Wow, okay. Uh, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't just so, uh, so far, by the way, sorry. It was NorCal as well. So they gave me seven different schools 
And um, I remember asking on Twitter, like, where do I go, guys? Like, I don't know anything. And uh, it basically came down to either going to um, somewhere uh, in San Francisco or Pomona, uh, SoCal. And I remember being at Albion 3, um, and I remember I saw, I met Pussy King uh, mm. from your from, from SoCal. Yeah. And uh, I actually asked him, I was like, bro, you live in SoCal, right? He was like, yeah. He goes, do you live anywhere near... Uh, and I think he said he lives in San Diego. But I'm yeah, sure. yeah, he, is... he, he lives. In, he hasn't. I haven't seen him in the longest time. Yeah, but he, yeah, he's from San Diego. One of the San. Yeah, so I remember. He literally said, he literally said, bro, if you if you're going anywhere in California, Pomona is a strong choice, and I recommend it. I was like, oh, for real? He's like, yeah, I recommend Pomona. I was like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna wait. I'm just gonna go to Pomona. So I, so you know, I applied for a Pomona. It was approved, and everything, everyone got sorted. You know, they accepted me. Um, and I went to the Pomona Facebook page, um, and I literally just said, like, I'm a, I'm a UK smasher, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, how do you get around in California? Because obviously in London, uh, yeah. where I'm from, you're just, you're just so used to public transport, you know, like train, bus, and everywhere. Nobody, not really many people drive in London because, like, there's transport. Um, Which I, and, I add, really... it's much better than SoCal's because I've had friends. Oh, yeah. I've had friends so, tell me, like, this is, your, this is what you guys ride on? And I was like... Hey, man, I just live here. It's terrible. I gotta deal with it. It's all I got. I couldn't believe it because I, because obviously I went to, when I studied abroad in California. I was there for six months, mm -hmm. but um, the first two weeks I was with my mum because my mum, my mum wanted to make sure you know I'm comfortable in the country because I'm gonna live there by myself, you know. Uh, so for the first two weeks, you know, we went around, you know, with Hollywood, you know, did the did the classical thing. When we first uh, experienced public transport, we were in disbelief because it's like the the ride from A to B. You know, something in, in London that would take max 15 minutes, just like over an hour. And it was it was five dollars uh, for a, uh, I don't know how you guys say it, a return, but what do you guys call it? A round trip? Is that what yeah, you guys yeah, call yeah, it? Yeah, 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 round trip. Yeah, a round trip, right? What do you guys call it? We call it a return because you go there and back. Okay, that's, a, that's much more simple. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you guys call it a round trip. What, what, um, anyways, I remember it being like five dollars for a round trip. And uh, you couldn't give, you had to give exactly $5. There was no, and I was just like, <laughs> that's great. Like, you know, in London, you just, you just put money on a, on a Oyster card. And some people put an Oyster card, you just tap it. And then, you know, that's, that's you go back a day. Mm -hmm. But I had to, you know, fork out $5 exactly. It was just, it was just a start of everything. But anyways, yeah, so realized that you have to drive to be anywhere. So obviously I was in, in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, I don't know anyone in uh, California uh, that, well, in real life. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna have to Uber to the to the weekly. Mm. You know, that's the, that was my thought. I'm gonna have to Uber yeah. to the weekly, so I don't really want to do that. Cause I'm already paying out of my butt for, for you know, for, for, to this Libya. And um, BMC hit me up, and uh, we used to play. We used to we knew each other from Discord because you know we both used to play Pac Man Smash Four, so we we were good friends. Um, now for everyone else, yeah. really quick, for everyone out there who doesn't know who BMC is, really mm. cool guy by the way. I've always. Yeah, he's got, if you've ever come to SoCal for like a major, you know, a saga or even in Smash 4, a saga or a major or a local, BMC was the guy who walked around the entire venue with a Pac-Man suit. And loved I'm not going to lie, I, I loved it because he was always fresh. That suit was the clean. Pac-Man loved it. We yeah, loved it, bro. That's, I have to give him credit, man. He kept that suit cl nothing but clean, man. So I have to give him his credit. <laughs> he, was, he was very keen on that. So he told me about... Um... How he he lives far from Pomona, but he knows people that do live in Pomona that you should go and meet. And I said, oh okay. Um, he said he said look out for Shinne. Now I'd heard of Shinne, right? You know, mm. I'd heard of because I used to love watching uh, MSM or whatever so far. So you know, I've heard of Shinne. I know you know who he is. Um, he said he lives in Pomona as well. I was like, okay, cool. Mm. Um, we found out we go to the same school. Uh, which was cool. Yeah. And then we and then we asked each other where we lived. Found out we live on the same campus, which was cool. And then it just got worse. It just got better and better because he was like, okay, what floor do you live on? Uh, in the like, what area do you live on? Live in the same area, okay? What floor do you live on? I live two floors below. It. So for the whole six months, mm -hmm. I was literally two floors below Shine. And every day, and I do mean, I literally mean every day, or close enough to every day, I would go. I would you know get ready whatever go two floors, go see him and just chill out with him. And I met I met him, I met Arkista, mm. I met uh Toasty, I met uh Kanye, who's now uh Mr Mr. Jordan. Is he Mr. Rogers, Mr. J. Mr. Rogers, Rogers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's uh I met I met Lou, you know, S D God, I met I met a lot of people. 
Uh, and then throughout the six months, I just met more and more SoCal people because I felt like your community was just super, super warm to, to just new people. It was crazy. I didn't feel alienated. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Shin, and I'm not going to lie, Shine was literally my taxi, man. For the whole six months, that man was my taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always loved Shine because every time I... Some of my favorite stories was, um, if, I think you remember Chase, right? It was Kiko. Yeah, I remember Chase. Yeah, so <laughs> he's always one of my favorite people to always talk to. Him and, him and Orchester and, and Toasty, I love them all. Like, they're all great people I always love to see at tournaments and just talk to in general because they always have something cool, interesting to tell me. Just a good just a good group of people I get to hang out with. Life that was wacky, that's what I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, very, very wacky. One of my favorite stories that, that I remember you and Kiko Men told me was you guys drove all around SoCal going to Starbucks mm. and Shine could not navigate for the life of him. Like he was just so, so lost. What if I remember correctly, mm. uh we we were hungry, right? Oh, <laughs> that's that's we were all hungry. Post tournament dinner or was it like let's just go eat? It was just like let's go eat. Like right, let's right, just right. go eat. It's late at night. We don't know what to eat. It was more of a case of, okay, we're not going here. We always get here. We're not going here. We always get here. Let's go somewhere new. Right. And I think there was about five of us in the car. And all five of us had different options. And everyone, and Ken being the driver was just like, <laughs> where are we going, guys? And everyone was getting annoyed. And it just it just went on for ages. And then we finally agreed on a, on a, a spot, a ramen spot, to, to a lot of people's dismay. I was, I was, I was, a, I was a fuss, you know, I don't mind. Right. Uh, and then when we get there, there was a, uh, I think we passed the Starbucks, and inside the Starbucks was like, just like these like um, these coffee cups, but like they were very very like uh, vibrant, like very di- like different colors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we just made a thing out of it, like we just we just all got a different color one, and we you know we still got it. I still got mine. I need to find it, but I still got mine. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, if I if I if I could sum it up, uh, like it, it's just the best. Like yeah. I, I always say to people, even now, like, I think 2019 was probably my favorite year. Oh, yeah, ever. I, I agree. Because it was just it was like six months of just wow. Every day I'd wake up offline to match. Like being from, uh, I'm guessing you want to talk about the differences between UK and mm-hmm. the US. Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll just say right now, just to, as a starter, like. In UK, you don't really play offline Smash that much. You know, we don't have weeklies every day. We don't, we're not a huge scene. We've we've been getting better, mm. definitely. In Smash Four, we had one weekly, uh, uh, one weekly a week, only one mm. weekly. You know, and then one monthly. Now, well, that was in London, and then now we have three weeklies, uh, two grind sessions, and we're working on monthlies. You know, so we, we were getting better. But like, whereas in SoCal, I was just playing offline Smash every day. You know, playing with friends and then playing with ones like most of the week. It was, it was, it was great. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was one of the criticisms that Iza kind of gave to me about like you know being part of the European scene. It's just mm. the lack of locals was just pretty yeah. evident. And shout outs to Iza because I had a really good time speaking to him and him, you know, telling me about how he thought process. Definitely, guys, go check out that video. And I probably i think i have that image that you're talking about where you guys all went to go get those starbucks cups so if you guys are watching the video version because this will go on soundcloud and spotify if i haven't made that announcement by now i don't know i've been recording with people for the past three days so i'm like losing my mind here <laughs> but you guys if you guys are watching the video version you guys i'll have that image definitely show up for all of you guys to see but if you're watching the audio version you might want to go check out the video version you know just to just to see what fabs is talking about but yeah, that's what he told me. It was the lack of locals. It was like, I used to tell people like every month or so living here in SoCal, people used to just tell me, like, I would have to go through like, actually shout out to Zan because Zan was always in the know. Zan was always like, he, uh, he would come to Fire and Dice, which is our Thursday weekly. And he would like talk about a tournament with somebody. And then I'd be like, oh, perfect. I know what to tune into this weekend, right? It would be like Albion. When that was a thing, it would be Beast, uh, Syndicate, um, you guys had the Dream Hack tournaments, or still do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys have the Dream Hack tournaments, which is which is actual circuit, which amazes me. And then you guys have, which even more amazed me is you guys had a major in a soccer stadium over there in France. So I was just like, dude, I'm shout out to Two GG. They put it, they do, they put in work. I, I, you know, working with them as long as I have, like they, I wasn't around for the ESA era, so don't ask me those questions. But like working with them, it's it's like. It's not a chore 
the best way I can describe it is this. I've had such a great time of like, yes, I'm probably up till four in the morning or I've only gotten four hours of sleep. But it's such a fun time because me and Warchief, we can joke around. Me and Javi can joke around. We're just having a blast just like trying to make sure the tournament runs great. So when you imagine putting together a major in a soccer stadium in France, but not only that, like just a major in general, like you said, in Europe, that's that's pretty that blows my mind it just doesn't i can't even fathom like here in the u.s if you try to get if, you, if you're watching from from europe here in the u.s if you try to get a try to get a venue like the convention center good luck you're breaking you're probably going to be breaking the bank because that is so expensive it, it's it's ridiculous the price of money but yeah, crazy yeah it's, it's ridiculous i think what i can say from speaking to somebody i don't want to name their names but there was talks of like trying to do something you know i can't remember who or what it was but because gtx happened to be at the it was a basketball it was a basketball stadium G, one of the gtx's happened to be a basketball stadium. i didn't even know that yeah gtx had gtx 2017 i want to say 2017 was in a basketball stadium and then 2018 was in their own venue okay so because, just to, just to let you know by the way just to let you know nothing uh Albion was was held. Albion Four was held in uh, the soccer stadium, by the way. The oh stadium. yeah, yeah, cause that, that's the one. Yeah, yeah in so England that's... it was held in uh, Arsenal, very famous stadium. Oh yeah, if you're, I'm I'm not a big soccer fan, but my previous roommate was, and she was a big soccer fan, so she was very much of like I gotta watch Arsenal and all these. Look yeah, the that's soccer what fans was, uh... <laughs> something, but yeah, let me just go ahead and jump ahead to you because that's what I want to hear more about. What's you, you obviously lived in Osaka for six months. I actually mm-hmm. tell people, despite despite a lot of things, I do agree with you. 2019 was such a really great year. I had mm-hmm. I had a really bl- good blast of 2019, right? And I kind of want to talk about to you, what, what are the, some of the contrasts and similarities you may or may not have seen between the U.S. and the U.K. scene, right? Like, what are, what are some of the things you probably thought, okay, this is so, similar, or are these a little bit different? So, def- I'll, say, I'll say contrast first. Uh, the biggest thing that stuck out to me is that... Uh, in um this, this is understandable but in in the us uh you got at tournaments you guys aren't really like supportive of like your friends per se like if if, if we're if we're all crowded around watching mm-hmm. i don't know charlie versus someone from from uh you know I, I, maybe asaga playing against someone from texas right we'll just be like oh let's go cdk or let's go charlie whereas uh if you if we're in, if we're in europe and, and you saw a uk player so say uh streaks right a very you might not know him he's a very good uk player if you saw him versus someone from spain uh you would hear most of the uk crowd going absolutely like insane like just mm-hmm. scream not screaming mentally just screaming like you know for them you know cheering very loud but i think feel like it's probably because it's a country versus region thing mm-hmm. but like uh country pride is so big in european majors uh like if i if i went to syndicate it's, it's round one people are gonna be roaring people are screaming because yeah. it's just it's just country pride whereas if i go to yeah. prime saga you know i don't i don't see nobody screaming um but at, at the same time uh i kind of i kind of i kind of like european more because i like to be loud you know i like to be cheering for my friends i like to be loud i don't, I don't mind that circle of quiet but at the same time you have so much more space and your venues are bigger you have way more people uh, yeah. there's so many people to meet and grind with and you can just talk. you don't even always have to play you can just talk you know mm-hmm. um i remember being at some tournaments and just talking for a good while with people i'd never met before because uh, people are so people are so friendly in america that's what i yeah. felt like maybe it's because I'm, I'm i'm english you know i've got a different accent and people want to hear <laughs> that i guess but um it's just it's just really cool that like uh there's just a lot of new people that i just got to talk to yeah. but um def- definitely like the energy is different you know mm. the energy is different I think but that's I don't mind it. That's, I have to agree with you. That's the one thing I maybe like. I don't, I can't speak for all of the US because there's definitely the Vegas crowd. The Vegas crowd, like. Oh yeah, I've been to Vegas. And that was pretty loud. I've been to Florida. Are, yeah. 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 yeah I know. Like mean. the West Coast crowd, we're it's kind of maybe because I'm usually either am on the mic or I'm doing background work, but I usually tell people like, yeah. So the crowd is pretty quiet. Sometimes. Yeah, definitely quiet. And I, like, it was really, it was really weird when I first went. I was just like, because from being from you know from somewhere that's just like used to screaming, you know that's what that's what it is. It's fine. Yeah. But you get used to it's, to just not hear that. Even in grand finals, it was just really, it was eye opening a bit. <laughs> it was just like wow. 
um, you know, the energy is definitely different here. That's but nice. I didn't mind it, you know. And that's the one thing that I kind of like, you know, when I when I met some people from the East Coast, and they were just like, oh, you know, you guys in the West Coast, all you guys want to do is go eat after tournaments. All you guys want to go eat, just go eat, just go like, man. And then the East Coast players, they were kind of like the ones who would just, at least the ones I met. Don't want to speak this is all of East Coast, but like the ones <laughs> I met were very much like, oh, you know, let's let's grind after, and like the tournament's over, let's grind. Money match, money match, money match. And I was like, oh, damn. But most of us West Coast, we usually like to go eat because... We either A, took a really fat L from somebody we didn't want to lose to, B, <laughs> didn't get as far as we want, so that's kind of like, C, we're probably hungry, right? Yeah. And then D, dude, that post-tournament gathering of, like, either, this is just a traditional New Orleans in SoCal, but, like, eating Korean barbecue or going to Cane's is just a treat within itself, because you guys just get- Yeah, I actually look forward to that a lot. Yeah, that was Can't the best lie. part. <laughs> that was the best part, it's just gathering around this- you know, a little restaurant that sells chicken tenders and just talking until two in the morning about like yeah. thoughts and opinions of like, oh, dude, you're carried. Oh, I don't think he's carried. You know, that kind of <laughs> talk. It's always, always great. Yeah, I, I, I was I was a very actually big fan of post tournament. Like just talking at like dinner time, just talking with like a bunch of people that I haven't really met yet. You know, mm. uh, that was that was pretty cool because I, I feel like I just met so many different people. Uh, right. So, like I said, a lot of people were just really friendly. And it's felt really good <laughs> to be well, you know. And as we, as you know, we're going on here. I kind of want to talk about now. You've managed to do something that I've that I've seen. A lot of people have seen, right? Mm. Within the past few weeks, within the past few months, mm. you have been become, become this big, 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 and maybe too much to some people's dismay, maybe to some people's delightment. You have become this big Twitter voice. I very much enjoy you know, mm. logging onto Twitter, and I'm like, okay, cool, aside from all this really bad stuff, or these really bad tweets, I get a really, mm. I either A, get a really good duck retweet, B, mm -hmm. get a good Fabs joke, mm. C, get a Fabs roast, which is probably the best one mm -hmm. I got out of the three, and what was it like to just start to capture an audience and just, like, I want to say, was it such a short amount of time that it just became, like, oh, shoot, like, everyone is talking about Fabs, but not only mm. that, it is... I'm very much a believer of, well, I'm trying not to curse too much, but for once, I'm just going <laughs> to let it slip. If you're going to talk shit, be ready to back it up. Because mm -hmm. if you if you say something and you can't back it up, trust me, you will get ready. You'll get eaten alive, bro. But I've eaten never alive. seen you take an, an L. And there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a funny art in the art of roasting. <laughs> and, you know, I, and I kind of want to talk about that. How do you... How, how do you master this craft? But also, what was it like to start, you know, gain that huge Twitter following that you've, you, that you've now amassed? So just go ahead. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me. It's, it's funny because I was talking about this on my stream. Uh, I've been streaming for a month now. Going back to it. used to stream years ago, but I've, you know, I was other problems. But yeah, I've come back to streaming a month ago. And just, I've just been took off. And every Thursday, I like to do a thing where I just have like a just chatting topic where right. I just talk about what people want to hear. You know, because people like to hear my voice. People like to hear my rants. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized that, so I thought maybe streaming can help that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I basically combined the two, make it like a little podcast. I'm working on that. Anyways, I'm rambling. So, anyways, um, I said this on my stream, I discussed it. I, this, somebody wanted me to talk about the Smash Twitter experience. And I, I, I said, I, one key phrase I said, uh, one key detail I said is that when I first started Twitter with like 100 followers and getting ratioed by Afro every day, because me and Afro are good friends, you know, get ratioed by Afro every day, uh, you know, we just, I'd say something. Nobody really noticed it because nobody at that point, Afro would come in through and say something else. Everyone would like his reply. You know, I've been used to that. Back then to the now, for me, nothing's changed. You know, mm. I, I've always done the exact same thing. I've called out top players. I've called out top commentators. I've called out these big voices that just, they might lie. They might say some stuff. They might act immature. You know, I'll get onto them just because I want to, you know, mm. and I still do that now. Uh, only now is that people have realized that, you know, this guy, wow, uh, he's very honest. I don't like him. Or, wow, he's very honest. I do like him. And I don't mind that. I don't mind if people don't like me. I can understand that. But I also um, want people to know that I don't tweet for... It sound. It might sound blunt, but I don't tweet to entertain... I don't tweet to, like, entertain people. But I don't mind if people get entertained by my tweets, you know? You know I, I tweet to make myself laugh. I, if, if I can't make myself laugh, then what's the point you know? that's how I felt yeah, I've always yeah. felt like, I can't make myself laugh I can't entertain myself if I'm not making my own sense then there's no point um, as long as I get my tweet off 
as long as I make sense. People like that, then that's fine. And then obviously people are coming, coming up in, I won't act all big headed and I'll be straight. You know, I've got people that are very high in the, I guess, the smash to hierarchy, uh, DMing me and telling me a thank you for, you know, your voice or whatever. And I always say like, I don't understand what I've done, but if, if I'm doing a good job, then, you know, I guess I can, yeah. whatever. And people have asked me, people have DMed me, people have asked me before like, oh, how do you get this big following? And I always say the same thing every time is that she just, you see your mind? <laughs> speak it. Just, just yeah. speak it, bro. Just speak it. Have confidence in what you say. If you mean what you say and say what you mean, I said this earlier. If you mean what you say and say what you mean, um, there's, there's, there's nothing else, you know? Don't be ashamed of what you tweet. Don't regret what, you, don't regret what you've tweeted. Because at the time you wanted to, you know? Uh, but just if you've ever made a mistake, just learn from it. But just admit it. Yeah. Don't backpedal. Because the moment you backpedal, you show weakness to people and you'll be getting eaten alive like this. This community loves to dogpile people, you know. They love to dogpile, oh, and that me, always yeah. happens. That always happens because people make something and they'll backpedal, and people will eat on that. They feed on that, bro. And I will never, ever, ever, ever backpedal. If I've tweeted something and I've been wrong, and I delete it, I'll admit that I was wrong. I will never ever shy away or backpedal and be like, "Oh, I actually meant this." No, no, no. I meant this, and I was wrong. I'll, I'll hold that, but I just haven't cross that path it, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. It, just, it just hasn't happened you said yeah. you said you wanted to talk about the art of roasting i don't think there is any sorry i don't think there's any art of roasting mm. uh i feel like i just say some very very uh just a lot of small comments about just like very specific things you know people might find it funny people might find it lame but it's just like like i said before if i make myself laugh you know i laugh at everything i've ever roasted uh, as long as i laugh at it then you know yeah. that's that's fine um and you also said i'm just 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 um stand on you said uh, become a very influential voice and I, f- I feel like that's because uh, like I said I just speak my mind I feel yeah. like honesty is literally you know the best policy I think that's... I'll never yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so sorry to cut you off I just wanted to add to no, that cool. is I think that's something that we kind of it sounds weird and it sounds may- not backwards I don't know if I mean I apologize to anybody if I'm speaking very very wrong or if it sounds like I'm quote unquote speak out of my ass here but at times I felt like we've always need not enough people do it because there it was quote unquote was and I and I was very very much into that myself I was very much part of that crowd there was this if you talk to a a top player or somebody within a hierarchy you look more like a gym to them because a certain mm-hmm. because a certain somebody had established that within the community and I personally didn't like that. I thought, like, dude, you should be able to talk to anybody. You're just another human being. There's n- so what? You're good at the game. You're just a human being at the end of the day, dude. You you go to the restroom like I do. You bleed like I do. You drink water like I do. You're, you're not that different. But a lot of the community, I felt like, slowly became quiet and was very, very... God, the word is on the tip of my tongue, so I'm losing it here. But they became very complacent with sometimes the... I wouldn't say slander, but like the things that some people said and nobody would speak against it. If a top player said something and it sounded like it was cap, nobody would say it. But then here comes you along, right? You're coming. You're like, bro, that's cap. That's that's so bad. And then you'll just say it. Why? You speak your mind. And then everybody will find like, you know, he's right. That's so dumb. That's so bad. The thing is, um... And the community never had that, that one person because if it was, it was usually like, another top player to another top player or mm-hmm. another or, or like a to to a top player and people were like all right cool well, those are the people who can speak and you know that that kind of stuff but i as an outsider as um originally as an outsider i would say as somebody with who's been watching a lot i felt like a lot of people just didn't really come into the mindset that you do and you were going to mm-hmm. say something go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I, was gonna, I was actually going to say about mindset it's just that um i just don't want anyone to think that i view as myself as some perfect god being that just you know is always right you know i accept that i've ever been yeah, wrong yeah, yeah. I, accept, you know, I accept that and i i think sometimes i might uh i guess go over the top with some some things i might have said but you know i've, I've always meant what i've said and i might be a blunt person but you know i think everyone knows that mm-hmm. well most people that know me you know uh, i'm a very very chill out person i always say if there's ever a big deep problem my dms are always open you know for anyone you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so i just want people to know that just before because i know I, I get a few people that will be like oh this guy doesn't care about anything. He's just a toxic uh, bully or, you know, whatever. And I always say, if you have a problem, you know, my DMs are literally open. Can, we can, can discuss, yeah, we can discuss, that. yeah. 
Uh, but just yeah, mentality wise, uh, just, just I always tell people that just, just if you're a shy person, you know, fair enough, you can't just force yourself to change. But just um, if you're trying to get yourself out there, just just have a bit of confidence, you know. Yeah. Have a bit of confidence in what you say. There's no need to shy away from just I don't know uh, what you're trying to say. Just have confidence in what you want to say. You know? Yeah, I, I think always I... have confidence in what, you, what I want to say. Always. So. As we're approaching the end, you know, I am glad to have you here on the show and talk a little bit about it, Ryan. Glad to be here. And for those of you guys watching, of course, I kind of told Fabs a little bit in the pre-show. This is kind of my, the way I've structured this season was very, very different. And if it, if you guys do or don't like it, please reach out to me. I would love to hear feedback. Uh, if you're going to say, oh, this podcast sucks, just tell me why it sucks. Don't say it sucks. Come on, bro. <laughs> give, give me real feedback here. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of doing it as I was supposed to travel this year. If you guys, by the time you guys already might have heard this, I already had Vicky Kitty on the show. She talked about how she was going to go to Germany. I wanted to go to Japan and Korea. I was going to be there for about a month or two. And then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm heartbroken by it. But it is what it is. 2020 is over. I just, <laughs> I just tell everybody, 2020 is done. Accept that it's a bad year, and then you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But I kind of, I also wanted to go to Europe. I wanted, I, I, was, I probably even wanted to go to Germany. I either wanted to go to Germany or I wanted to go to Spain. Enough about that. Enough about me. This is kind of my, if you've watched the pilot and you're probably watching like, hey, we're at this episode. This is my quote unquote passport five episodes of this season. And I'm glad that I can have Fabs here. And of course, you guys probably already saw you. We have Izzo and then I hope to have, I don't want to, at the time of this recording, I don't want to spoil, spoil the beans who the other, you know, are going to be. But this is definitely the first step. So now that I'm asking you, Fabs, is we've passed a point in which it's really interesting to see where we've come as a community. There's mm-hmm. there's no locals. They're they're all online tournaments. Smash has changed for it sounds really weird, but it sounds for the better when it comes to a lot of things, but also for the worse. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious to see, you know, you who were very vocal at that time, you who weren't, you know, a lot of us weren't if we all stopped being afraid to speak out. Mm-hmm. But, but you somebody who was you know hearing about these things at first learning about a lot of stuff how did you see the community before all this happened before we entered quarantine and then now where do you see it because in my opinion i feel like ultimate is kind of in a really weird place you know it's well it's... I'd, I'd say as a, as a whole um like all the all these allegations uh that 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 surfaced during quarantine uh a lot of people will tell you that they'd heard before. You know, I'd heard a lot of them before, but nobody, it was all that she just post dinner talk. Uh, you, know, you know, you get dinner and you talk about, oh, imagine this is happening. You'd be, no one would believe it because they're just rumors. You know, there's just rumors that people will spread. And I always say to myself, uh, if you don't know any, if you don't know something about a topic, if you don't know the facts about a topic, there's no point speaking on it. Yeah. Because if you get questions on it, what, what can you say? You know, you can't say anything. So just, you know, if I don't know anything, if I don't know facts, I'm not going to say anything. So if I, I've heard these allegations before, but I can't raise them to anyone because I don't know the true facts, you know, so mm. I can't speak on it. I'd look like an idiot. So already there, you know, I, I, I didn't think anything of the community. You know, I just thought the community was fine. You know, it's just a normal gaming community. You know, there's always going to be some bad eggs. There's always going to be, you know, the good people, majority. So, you know, I didn't really think of anything bad in that regard. Uh, but also as the game, uh, like the meta and all that, um, because I, I played uh, competitive wise, you know, I just played a little bit. Um, quitting the quarantine for my life. Um, but <laughs> I think we all, I feel like we all have. The, <laughs> before the quarantine, um, yeah, I was, I, was a big, you know, I was a big fan of uh, Ultimate. You know, I, I like the game. Uh, I still like the game offline. Uh, it's just that um, I was looking, re- I, I didn't mind where the meta was going. You know, people didn't, re- people thought the meta was stale or, you know, certain characters need to be nerfed. I'm not, I'm of the opinion that characters don't really need to be nerfed. Mm-hmm. But characters don't need to be buffed. I'm a very, I'm a very, I'm very weird at that. I think a lot of people ask for buffs, but I don't think any character deserves buffs. I feel like characters, you know, should be bad for a reason. Uh, if your right, favorite right. character is isn't good, then that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I don't know. Um, you just have to hold that. That's, that's how <laughs> yeah, I see yeah, you yeah, have to hold that, man. Your character, like for someone that used to main Pat, Patman Smash Four, and I just sold it out. You know, uh, I just I had to ride that out. I had to just accept that he's a bad character. Bro. Like, I just have to hold that. Yeah, that's the same way. Like you know, if your favorite character in Smash Bros is bad, then don't, don't, there's no point begging for buffs because you're not gonna learn. Uh, I'm not a top player, but you know, a top player doesn't have to tell you that. You know, you're not gonna learn <laughs> yeah. if you just keep asking I for think, buffs. You know, so it's, 
Yeah, and, and I agree. I think Ezra really put it put it really well last episode. Probably referring. I'm going to be referencing episodes within episodes. <laughs> so please get used to that. But he had a really good statement of like the reason why you kind of want to pick up these. I, th- I can't remember what he said exactly, but to what stands out to me is the core five, you know, p- character like Wolf, Lucina, mm-hmm. those kinds of characters is because one they're very they're very simple to pick. Not a lot of mm-hmm. not a lot of complicated. They have very good potential. To if you are somebody who wanted an easy character to pick up, you can do pretty well. But if you want to put in potential, the character has that as well. But also, they're not lacking in a different uh, an area which would be very very difficult in the meta. Like for an example, if you want to be the K roll main, I'm not going to go ahead and stop you. But you better get used to throwing crown and cannonball every yeah. few seconds of your yeah. life. Yeah. And if you're losing a matchup, don't come up to me and tell me like, oh, I wish I got a K roll buff. When I can tell you like, bro, your if your character already has an L. On their skill side, on their skill side. <laughs> you gotta learn how to hold that out, bro. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. Not, like, you're like, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna discourage. You know, low ten minutes. I was low no, ten no, minutes no, myself. No, no, no. Like I said, you know? but it's just that you just have to. If you, if it's, if that's your character, you just have to hold that and just work yeah. on your character yourself, man. Even even in Street Fighter, you, you see it in all these other, yeah. other fighting games. Like if sometimes the character is actually just for some reason, I I don't know why. I mean, I think bad. Let me rephrase this. Me coming, I, I came from a Yu-Gi-Oh background, so I came from a. Oh, right, okay. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day, and I loved Yu-Gi-Oh. And still do to still to this day, right? I play Hearthstone a little bit. People used to ask me why do bad cards exist, and I used to answer to them because they have to teach you how to use a good card. Mm-hmm. That is why bad cards exist. The reason why they print out pack fillers is probably also because they need to fill out nine cards of the, of the three ninety nine you spent, <laughs> but. Bad cards exist to teach the players what a good card is and to have a comparison to that card. If I throw out Mirror Force, but there's a card like Mirror Force and it's not better than Mirror Force, then that is a bad card. That's not a good card. So that teaches you if this has to be better than Mirror Force in order for me to use it. And it is the same way with any fighting game. If there are bad characters for reasons, it's to teach Yeah, somebody. exactly. And that, that's why I feel like with the, with the um, community before quarantine, I thought... I thought uh, the meta was fine to a degree. Yeah. It was fine. You know, it's just a normal, you know, it's just still, but I thought, you know, community was fine. Uh, I was happy with the game. My scene in London was, was booming, actually. It was actually, you know, we just got a... Uh, we, I don't know if America has it. I know Japan has it. We have something called the Red Bull Gaming Sphere. Uh, I wish. It's a gaming sphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's actually sponsored by Red Bull. You know, they just give you free Red Bull. Uh, and you just play 2 till 10 p.m. Uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays with our grind sessions. You know, we didn't have that in Smash 4. You know, we had we, and it was also a weekly as well, a bi-weekly. So we had a bi-weekly in Red Bull Sphere, and then they also gave us a chance to play all day, two till ten p.m., two days a week, and then a, and then a weekly on the next day. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was just Smash, you know, offline, beautiful. You know, we didn't really get that, so um, we were we were booming. And then quarantine has just hit a wall, and it's just like back to the old days of just mostly online. You might go see your friends. And play with them, I guess. Let like, meet up. But yeah, Sorry. quarantine after. I'm just, I'm just looking at this Red Bull game atmosphere, and I'm like, there's no such thing in the. The only thing we have is like, of course, ESA. That's like the closest. Yeah, ESA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm like, kind of hurts Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna... <laughs> kind of, kind of hurts a little bit. I would, I would, I would have thought that uh, the US would have had one, but yeah, I remember. I know Japan has one. But, uh, I still love you, yeah, Red Bull. You... But best, I'm not gonna lie. They don't sponsor <laughs> me. They're not sponsoring this episode. If you guys want to, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy. It was crazy to me how they how they give you free Red Bull. I don't know why. That's that was like you just I... go there and they have fridges of just normal Red Bull, uh, coconut, uh, tropical, oh, dude, all, all, best all these, coconut, coconut. It, all these, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I could definitely, uh, as my testament to anybody, really quick, just, just to end up that segment. Red Bull, reach out to me if you want me to sponsor. But <laughs> I actually do like that. Red Bull. I, I do like Red Bull. I, it's, it's a real, it's, out of all the energy drinks, I don't like Monster because, or, I don't, it's not that Monster's bad. It's just, it's not for me. It's not for me. But Red Bull, if you guys want my testament, what's an energy drink you guys might want to drink? <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull and G Fuel are the two ones that I prefer to have. You were going to say five. Red, Red Bull Gaming. So let's go back to it. Uh, so yeah, that 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 you know that will put um that put England uh, England London on the map uh, uh, per se, and then when quarantine hit, everything just hit the you know everything hit, went back to square one, just uh, offline mostly. And I feel like that leading into what you said about you know the the game before the community, I think the community now with quarantine uh, missed uh, quarantine is just like. 
it's hard, man. It's it's you. very hard. It's super hard. Like uh, the game, just like just the two things. One of them being uh, the game is just not too enjoyable online. As I'm not going to explain why. Everyone knows the game overall is not enjoyable online. It's doable, but like mm-hmm. in 2020, why is a game doable? It should be favorable, you know. Yeah. Uh, just standards. Um, and then as well as that, yeah, you've got all these allegations coming out to be true. Uh, you've got a lot of, a lot, a lot of very, very, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. Very, very high, high rated top players, top commentators, big personalities all coming out as very, very bad people. Mm. Uh, and all at once. And it was very, like the first part of June, or oh, sorry, the first part of July was such a train wreck. The first three days, I think people were people waking up depressed, you know, their, their heroes and all that have been outed as, you know, God knows what. And I feel like that really hurt. I think those two things hurt the community a lot. I saw a lot of people, myself, quit. They just don't want to be associated with it. Uh, yeah. I quit I quit Ultimate competitively before the allegations. Because... <laughs> You're like, if it wasn't the allegations... Yeah, I just, just want to say I quit the game. I quit the game. I, I'm still a Convini. I'm still a Convini. I still play the game. Yeah. I just don't play it professionally more because I personally, I found the best game to play. Uh, for me, I'm not saying it's a better game overall. I think it's a better game for me to play. That game is Rivals of Ether. So I'm just gonna mm-hmm. put that out there. It's a great uh, game, great game. I actually made. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm extremely big fan of that game now. Yeah. Uh, I had I had the pleasure of for like one event and speaking to him. Too. I met Edelus. He's he's the community manager for Alice. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah, you met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met I met Edelus. I met Windows, and uh, there was Anti, not the other one you guys know, but there's, there's oh the Ori. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ori, the Ori yeah. made. Yeah, he was he was doing an excellent job of just coming to MSM. He's like, hey, can I can I put my setup here, of Rivals? Maybe yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That I was yeah. so in search, but I actually remember just like mm-hmm. being on my own at MSM, and I didn't really know anyone. And he just came up to me like, bro, do you play Rivals? And I was like, I don't really play it too much, but like, you know, I, I don't mind mm-hmm. playing. He's like, oh, I've got a setup. And I was like, wow. Um, that's like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever played with him, but I was like, wow. Um, yeah. But yeah, just to, just to go off it, uh, just to get back, like I feel like um, when I quit the community, I just quit the game competitively. I still, I'm still in the community. I'm still playing the game. Right, it's right. not uh, competitive level where I feel like a lot of people just quit because of these two major things I said. You know, their heroes getting outed, and then also the, the game online isn't really enjoyable. And where competitive people want to practice, it's very hard to practice online. So then it discourages it just discourages them to play. So people have just found different games to play. But honestly. Overall, I think that's I think that's healthy that people are finding other games to play. Because oh, I feel yeah, like yeah, when we yeah. eventually when we eventually go back to offline, you know, people are just gonna go flop back. Yeah, I might even get back into competitive smash. You know, mm-hmm. it's just that now I just can't play it personally. I just can't deal with it. Right. <laughs> I think I think my question to you here is just to wrap this up. Right. I'm mm-hmm. we're all we're all in a different space. I think I I think I still love ultimate. I've accepted it. it's not the fun funnest thing online. I think the one glimmer of hope was like Tweak winning the was it Gom Gomo online? Yeah, yeah, he won Gomo. Yeah, Gomo online the other day. Yeah. So the one light on this tunnel was Tweak winning Gomo online. So like, it's like okay, cool. There is some quote unquote offline order in the online space. <laughs> um, and then, then I, granted, everybody knows me. I hate Diddy, but still happy he won. I really, really enjoy watching Tweak play. So shout outs to him for winning. But I think what I kind of want to ask you is now that you're taking this following you're you're learning a lot right of like okay here this is people like me ranting i want to take advantage of that right people Mm -hmm. need to hear my rants i want to go ahead and provide a space for them i'm going to go ahead and stream those rants now i want to stream more you know i my 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 advice and we can get to that in just a second here my advice to you is probably to pick up maybe commentary i don't know if you want i don't know if people have approached you if you thought of doing that here a lot of people a lot of people have told me to get and that's my question to you is where do you see yourself as right now you're growing Mm-hmm. Where where do you, where do you want to branch out? You know, you're you're, you're getting into rivals, you're getting into mm-hmm. League, you're mm-hmm. getting into Mario Kart, right? Like, wh- mm-hmm. where do you, where are you trying to go? You know, what what's what's the future like hold to you? What are you? What well, are you see, see, a lot of people have asked me that. Like, what what are you actually trying to do now? Like, now you've got a stable Twit, uh, Twitch channel, mm-hmm. uh, Fab ninety seven by the way, FABZ ninety seven. Um, mm-hmm. Now that you've got a stable Twitch channel, uh, everyone's always like, what what's the next plan? And I feel like uh, I want to start off as. I want to play the games I want, and if you want to watch, you watch. Now that I've established my own community, I've got my own Discord as well, I'm, I'm actually starting to branch out to these different games. I'm trying to be a little bit of a variety streamer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not going to reveal the plans I've got right now. 
So. Fair, 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 fair. I thought you would give me the scoop, but it's all good. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm, bra- I'm, I'm branching out. Um, you know, I play different games. I play a lot of different games, single player, uh, fighting games, uh, you know, a lot of different games. I'm just trying to branch out. And I've also got this Thursday thing, a little podcast thing that I'm working on. Um, I think, I'm thinking of, this is the scoop. I'm thinking of oh, putting yeah, thank these, you, thank you. Uh, having separate VODs of my certain rants or whatever I talk about, and then maybe going into YouTube playing on YouTube oh. and just branching out from there and seeing what people think of that. Uh, I think getting it was... Ed- was getting an editor and then uh, going from there. Uh, as far as commentary goes, uh, I've commented one set as a joke uh, and people liked it. Um, can I, can so I, what it was? I, I, uh, so I it was... It. It, was very, it was actually really funny. So basically, uh, in Smash 4, uh, this is again, this is just the difference between Europe and uh, US. It was literally just a, a, a local uh, in England. Um, two friends, you know, round one. I just said as a joke, I think person A will win. And my other friend was like, nah, 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 person B will win. I was like, all right, side bet. On a round one uh, of a weekly, you know, nothing, nothing major. It ended up being, uh, I think, 60, 60 pound side bet because. 11 other people bet five pounds with me so 12 people bet five pounds with me right and i had to bet I, so it would be 60 pounds split between these 12 people whereas if i won they don't give me you know 60 pounds right and uh me and the person who first disagreed with uh commentated the set between them two you know joking around and uh, people actually said that my commentary was actually pretty good for someone that wasn't you know and i thought okay maybe i could get into it i never did i never Got into it, but you know, I'm still, I'm still open, man. I'm a very open-minded person, so we're gonna get into it. To add to context for the audience, a pound is equivalent to 1.38 of a United States dollar. I don't know if it's at 1.38, like a dollar and 38 cents, or what. I'm not, I'm not part of the US. Probably one, one dollar 38 cents. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'm not part of the US, you know, Treasury Department or anything. But if you were to translate those 60 pounds, you guys bet that's 78 dollars for all my fellow USA folks out here. So that's for round saying. one, round one of a weekly, this is by the way, and we, I was absolutely scared because I did not want to lose 60, 60 pounds to, you know, to a, just to a round one weekly, but I won that, just that, you know, I won that. Okay, 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 well, that's good. That's so then good. it said, so, so people lined up, they all, I, I told them all my PayPal and I got my, <laughs> my 60 pounds, um, and I'll never forget that. But yeah, I did commentary for a, a little bit, but okay. I don't know if I would uh, pursue it properly, but I'll, okay. yeah, I'll look into it. You're looking to, yeah, that's what one as, of as far as as far as me goes, like where my growth is right now, uh, focusing on just building my Twitch me a bit more, uh, trying to get partnership. I've got mm-hmm. affiliate, thank God. Uh, and yeah, just I feel like the podcast part is the biggest part of my my thing. Everyone likes to hear my voice on what's my, what's your take on this, Fabs? Fabs, can you talk about this? Or Fabs, like, would you know, I want to hear talk about this. And it's like, okay, I don't mind. I feel like putting that on YouTube, making yeah. a channel out of that, just out of my rants, and then keeping the streaming of the games on Twitch. I feel like those two would be cool to just... Uh... I think I think that's a really good... I think that's kind of like what this episode's, you know, underlying, how would I say, theme is, you know, understanding your, your following, your success, being confident, and like you said, right, what you being confident yeah. in what you say. Don't backtrack. Don't show weakness. You know, it's okay, it's, it's okay to be wrong. You exactly. Know, it's, it's, exa- it's okay to be wrong. Exactly. It's okay to be wrong. Don't, you know, stand up, accept that you're wrong. Understand your following. I think that's what you, you've kind of like talked about, right? You understand your following. Hey, Fabs, we want to hear you rant. All right, cool. Let's put, let's go on just chatting on Twitch. Hey, yeah, we, want yeah. to, we love to hear you talk. All right, you know what, guys? I'll get a podcast going on for you, right? Because that, 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 I just wanted to say, I just wanted to Israel, like, I, when I actually first got this, like, I think when I got to like 1K followers or 1.5K followers, right? I was always saying to myself, like, bro, where did this all come from, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but and as as these bigger personalities DM'd me and, and told me stuff, I realized that, wow, not that I have to have this reputation, but I've, I've apparently got this reputation on my shoulders where I need to do act a certain way. And it's just like, even though I didn't ask for that, uh, I definitely did not ask for that. Uh, I don't mind being this influential voice people view me as. I didn't. I didn't agree to that. that I didn't think I was <laughs> in a voice. Honestly, I didn't think I was. Yeah. I thought I was just saying whatever I want. But some people like the way that I approach things. So I thought, you know what? I can run with that. You know, I'm not being fake. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it with me. And people know that, and I think people like that. And I, 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 
I like that too. So I'm glad that people see that. And thank God it's got me my growth where it is now. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy about that. And, and growing on Twitch right now is a really good time, especially because, you know, we're all home. We're all stuck. At yeah, home. exactly. Watch. Yeah. So if you can grow on Twitch right now is the golden era to do it. You yeah. Know? Especially for a lot of people who, you know, trying to figure out what to do. And I, like I, I could tell many of you guys, this is season one, you know, we might get Fabs back for season two. You know, maybe we might collaborate on podcasts. I'm really excited to hear about what your successes as you go on with your podcast and go with that. I wish I had community questions, but like I kind of told myself and I told, you know, my friends and the close friends that I talked to about with this podcast. I, you know, I kind of want to make sure I film all of season one and then see how the reception is. And then I'll probably film season two live because no one's fault. Probably repeated this a dozen times. Sorry, I apologize. No one's fault. I've done podcasts before. I think I got discouraged when some people were leaving and I thought that was my fault. Totally okay. I decided let's go ahead and get season one no matter what. Through 10 I think this is a good idea, by the way. Just to I let you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I, I love this idea. Yeah, thank really you so much. So I said, let me let me get ten episodes of people that I people that I like, people that I know, influential people. And coincidentally, you know, we you and I have met before. We've talked, we've hung out. So thank you guys all for watching. But I wish I had a community question. But I guess my community question for you, Fabs, with the underlying theme of growth, of learning to take advantage of your influences, what's you know of speaking your mind, don't be afraid. If you can offer advice to people on trying to seek growth or having growth or how to hold it, what, what would it be? What, what, what kind of advice would you offer to people? Uh, if you have any, I don't know. I feel like this is, you know, may, may not be a little... My only, my only advice, as I say every time, is literally just, it's very simple. It's literally just, um, just be true to yourself, man. It's very cliche, but just be true to yourself. There's no point trying to act a certain way. Don't uh, get this persona because when people meet you in real life, they're going to expect this persona. If you don't have that, it's going to be very, very weird. <laughs> so just very act true, how you would true. act how you would, you know, in real life, man. If yeah. you if you're if you're not loud, that's fine. You don't have to be. Yeah, but yeah. you can if you want growth, you gotta be yourself because that's the only way you're gonna grow properly. If you grow a certain way uh, with this persona, that's what you, that's what you're gonna have to act as out for your whole life. You know, <laughs> that just sounds daunting. <laughs> so I could never uh, put some mask on. What you see is what you get, man. Yeah, yeah I guess absolutely fine, man. I don't expect everyone to, so just be yourself. Babs, I think you you wrapped up the show better than I could ever could. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thank you, but thank you honestly, thank you for for contacting me. I think for messaging me. Yeah, uh, dude, of really course, excited, of course. I'm 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 happy to talk to you. I, like I said, this is also really good for me because I get to talk to people I haven't seen in a while, people I wish. Yeah, for real, it's been a long time, man. Fabs, as we close out the show, um, please let please let the good people know. I'm probably. I'm going to do post editing, so I'll probably have like your Twitter info. But for the people who want to reach out to you, where can where can they find you? So you can find me um, on Twitter. If you don't follow me, you should follow me because why would you not? <laughs> Copter K O P T E R two underscores. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to watch me, Rage at Mario Kart playing at the game, it's twitch.tv forward slash fabs ninety seven f a p z ninety seven. And yeah, that's the two places you can find me the most. All right, Fabs. Thank you so much, guys. I'm gonna wrap up the show. We're gonna have a little bit of a post show, which I'm just at the time of this recording, I still haven't figured out where I'm gonna put the post show. I'm gonna put the post show somewhere. It's gonna go somewhere. It might be in my YouTube. It might be in two G YouTube. I don't know, but it'll be out there for you guys. Until then, guys. If you guys want to get the post show, definitely I will. I'll obviously link out to where it's going to be, guys. But until then, it has been my pleasure to serve you, Fabs. Thank you for coming, guys. And Thank please, you, welcome, bro. Stay safe and. Be kind to one another. Have a good day, guys.